Hello everyone, welcome to the session on Energy Engineering. I am Satish H, Assistant Professor, Department of Mechanical Engineering, Maharaja Institute of Technology, Mysore. So, in the last session, we have discussed uh, about the introduction to the uh, biomass, that is module number 5. So, we have briefly discussed about what do you mean by the biomass, okay, how do you, uh, like a biomass is formed, and then uh, later on we discussed about what are the conversion technologies we have in order to convert uh, that biomass into useful form of energy. And also later we discussed about some of the uh, important advantages and uh, disadvantages of uh, biomass. So this session is continuation of that. So particularly in this session, we start up with discussing about the various forms of the biomass. Okay. So we know that uh, biomass energy is the energy from the, uh, it is an organic matter or the energy from the living organisms, maybe like uh, plants, animals, or uh, algae, okay, or fungi, etc. Whatever uh, living organisms are there on the face of the earth, okay. So that we call it as the biomass energy. So what do you mean by this, uh, the forms of biomass, okay. So we can uh, make use of this biomass, uh, the sources of energy from the biomass, either in a direct way, uh, for example, if you take the wood, okay, so uh, if you have a dry wood, okay, by burning it, you can get the, like a heat energy. That is the direct method of uh, like utilizing this uh, biomass energy. And then you can convert that biomass into some of the useful form of uh, fuels. For example, it is a solid fuels or liquid fuels or gaseous fuels, okay. So we convert into the some of the useful form of energy and then we can make use of them, okay. For example, uh, like you extract uh, the ethanol that is a liquid biomass uh, fuel so from the uh, like a, from the bagasse that is the waste of this uh, sugarcane after extracting the sugarcane juice whatever the remaining uh, the product which is remaining okay that is called as bagasse okay so from that you can extract the ethanol okay so by processing it okay by fermentation process so like the various uh, forms of biomass okay we will discuss about uh, the end form of energy or the useful form of biomass energy so that may be in the form of solid fuels or liquid biomass fuels or gaseous biomass fuels okay so we uh, try to discuss some of the most important forms of those energies the first one among them is a fuel wood okay so as i was discussing in the introduction classes uh, the fuel wood okay the wood is uh, one of the oldest uh, form of energy okay it is existing from many many years okay so which is one of the uh, primary and then the first source are the oldest source of energy so and then which is uh, how do you get this energy from that uh, the fuel wood is okay by the method of uh, direct combustion we can get this uh, the energy normally the energy what we get is uh, that is in the form of an heat energy and then uh, what are the major uses we know that from uh, like a since long time so the uh, like a man is using this uh, wood okay for the uh, cooking purpose as well as uh, in cold countries that can be used to you know to heat up the uh, living room okay that is heating purposes as well okay so the main important advantage or the use or the application of this is the cooking and heating is used okay uh, from the bio, like uh, the energy which is obtained from the fuel wood and then what is the energy density energy density is uh, upon burning a 1 kg of a uh, fuel okay if you take 1 kg of the wood okay if you burn that so under uh, conditions okay certain conditions okay, so how much energy is released that is the energy density that is an important measure in order to compare the different fuels as well okay so and then that energy density for the wood okay if you burn one kg of the wood you will get about 16 to 20 kilo megajoules i am sorry megajoules of energy okay 16 to 20 megajoules per kg is the energy density of this uh, fuel wood and then uh, of course, it has a certain disadvantages of using a fuel wood. Uh, one of the disadvantages, uh, it causes a health hazards because when the wood burns, okay, it re releases uh, harmful gases, okay, so maybe carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, oxides of nitrogen and sulfur, etc. Okay, when we, uh, while cooking, okay, when the person inhales uh, this, uh, the smoke, 
uh, emanating from this burning of wood okay so then that might cause over the long longer period of exposure to that smoke will result in some of the uh, respiratory disorders for example that will cause the health hazards okay and then one of one more disadvantage of this fuel wood is okay it might uh, lead to okay uncontrolled combustion okay so that is about the like uh, the fuel that is the biomass uh, fuel that is fuel load okay which is a solid form of energy and then next is a uh, charcoal so charcoal which is a uh, clean okay so compared to uh, wood okay it is uh, it uh, like it uh, it gives okay less smoke okay we can almost call it as a smokeless and then uh, which is a dry fuel which is black in color okay after burning the wood okay uh, through the process of carbonization you will get the charcoal okay so and then which is a solid fuel okay so and then method uh, by what method you can obtain this charcoal is okay by the carbonization process of wood biomass okay so you take the wood uh, which is also a biomass and then if you uh, use the carbonization process okay you can get the the charcoal as the uh, like a fuel and then what is the composition of this okay it contains very very high quantity of this uh, the carbon about 75 to 80 percent of the carbon is present inside this um, like a charcoal okay so and then energy density if you compare this wood and then this charcoal wood is having 16 to 20 megajoules per kg whereas the energy density of this charcoal it is almost double okay if you take one kg of the wood okay if you take one kg of the charcoal if you burn them separately the wood releases about 16 to 20 kilojoule megajoules per kg whereas this uh, charcoal releases about 30 megajoules per kg of the uh, energy okay that means the charcoal as having a higher energy density okay so and then where do you use them of course we use it as a domestic fuel okay for domestic applications and uh, industrial fuels okay so one of the important application while making this high quality steel okay so you make use of this uh, fuel that is the uh, charcoal okay in making the high quality steel okay you can make use of charcoal as the the fuel which is a biomass fuel okay so this is about the fuel wood and then the charcoal we have okay so next uh, type of fuel that we are going to discuss is uh, fuel pellets and briquettes okay fuel pellets and briquettes so this is also an example for the uh, solid biomass fuel so how do you get them okay the crop residue okay majorly the agriculture or the crops that we grow that is the raw material for this uh, fuel uh, pellets and then the briquettes the straw that we call it as a dried grass okay we call it as a straw and then rice husk okay after removing that external portion of the rice okay so that uh, will uh, produce some kind of a powder okay that is called as a rice husk and then waste wood okay so this is also a raw material for making the fuel pellets and briquettes okay so what are some of the advantages of this uh, fuel pellets and briquettes are okay so that is one reduced moisture content okay so it has a less moisture if you take the wood for example it might have a lot of I mean it contains some moisture okay more compared to this uh, fuel uh, pellets and briquettes okay the moisture content is less when the moisture content is less okay it, uh, it definitely produces a less smoke okay as well as the energy density is more in that case okay and the increased energy density okay as I said the energy density that is if you burn one kg of this uh, the fuel pellets or briquettes okay you'll get a lot of energy from it okay compared to the wood or charcoal okay that is one more advantage of the uh, fuel pellets or briquettes okay this is a third type of fuel and then the fourth one is biodiesel okay so biodiesel okay so we know the diesel already that is diesel is uh, that is extracted from the fossil fuels okay that is accumulated over the millions of years okay so that we uh, take it but here the diesel is accompanied with the the word bio that means it is from the biomass okay so it is extracted from bio uh, vegetable oils the vegetable oils can be it is a edible oil or non-edible oil and then uses is it is used in the diesel engines okay so uh, like a you can use this biodiesel in the pure form okay so or you can blend okay with the 
uh, the, a diesel from the fossil fuels, okay, and then you can use that as a, a biofuel as in the pure or blended form, you can use them, okay. So, what is the method through which this uh, biodiesel can be extracted from these vegetable oils, okay, which are edible or non edible, is called as uh, the process is called as a trans esterification. So, here basically the glycerin extracted from the animal fat or the vegetable uh, oils. And then what are some of the advantages? Of course, it is biodegradable, right? So it, uh, like after burning this, uh, the vegetable oil, okay, or this uh, biodiesel, okay, so you don't get uh, so many harmful uh, pollutants will be released into the atmosphere, which is clean and green form of energy, and which is non-toxic, okay, so, and then simple to use and free from sulfur and ammonia, okay, so which is uh, free from the chemicals, the sulfur and um, ammonia, okay. In fact, uh, the peanut oil, okay, the oil which is extracted from the peanut, peanut is the ground nuts what we use. In fact, the, uh, the scientist Rudolf Diesel, who invented the diesel engine, he, he, he first tested, okay, or the run the engine, Okay, using this uh, the oil which is produced from the peanut oil. Okay, that is a, a biodiesel. Okay, so uh, that is about this uh, biodiesel. And the next type of uh, the fuel, the biomass fuel we are discussing about is the bioethanol. Okay, the chemical formula for that is C2H5 and OH, which is uh, colorless liquid okay which is the liquid biofuel okay so which is in the form of a liquid biofuel a method is a uh, wet biomass uh, from which we can extract this bioethanol for example the raw material for that are uh, sugars okay for example the sugar cane is one of the example for that from which you can extract this through the fermentation process as well as you have a starch one of the example for this starch is potatoes, okay, so from which also you can extract this bioethanol and then cellulose, okay, the from woody matter, okay, that you can extract this, um, the bioethanol, okay. So what is the raw, raw material for bioethanol? As I said, the sugarcane is uh, predominantly or most widely used uh, raw material for extracting this a uh, biofuel that is bioethanol okay so where do you use this which is a liquid fuel we can use that in a internal combustion engines okay so that is one of the use of this uh, like a bioethanol the next type of fuel that we are going to discuss is the producer gas what are the uh, raw materials that we need for this producer gas is that is a crop residue, that is agriculture uh, residue, what we have that crop residue that it can be used. And then uh, wood chips, okay, so that is one more. And bagasse, which is uh, from the sugar cane, after extracting the juices of the sugar cane, whatever the, uh, the byproduct that is remaining is, that is bagasse. Rice husk, of course, and then the coconut shell, okay, after de-asking of this coconut, okay, the, what is that? A byproduct you get okay that can be used to uh, produce the producer gas okay what is the method of this uh, producing the producer gas is called as a gasification okay you are going to learn in the uh, future sessions okay about the, what do you mean by the gasification okay so there are three types that we will study in detail uh, the producer gas is extracted from the process of gasification which basically the uh, gases containing the carbon monoxide, hydrogen and carbon dioxide, okay. Basically under uh, like a control condition using a gasifier uh, device, okay. So what we do is at higher temperature we take these raw materials in order to produce these gases, okay. That gases can be used for various uh, purposes. And what is the composition of it, okay. It is having, having a 90% of uh, carbon monoxide and uh, about 1% of a methane and then 18 percent of hydrogen okay and about 11 percent of carbon dioxide okay where do you use these uh, like a producer gases are uh, like for example in ice engines like in some cases uh, in the irrigation field okay for the uh, pumping of this water okay so in the irrigation pumps you can use that and then also you can use them in the motor vehicles and then energy density of course it is how much energy if you burn this one meter cube of this producer gas okay by volume okay so you will get about four to eight megajoules of energy per meter cube and then last one uh, the fuel that we are going to discuss is biogas okay what is the raw material that we need in order to produce a biogas is okay so that is basically organic waste okay from animals and plants 
that are the uh, raw material that we use for this production of this biogas and what is a process fermentation process okay okay we have a device called as a digester we take all this animal and uh, uh, the plant waste and then we uh, like a uh, ferment that over the period of times okay uh, like by the enzymes and then the water okay by the chemical process that will be uh, like the end we will get it as a, a biogas what is a by byproduct of it okay after obtaining this biogas we have this nitrogen rich sludge okay that can be used as a, a soil conditioner or a fertilizers in the agriculture field that is a bio manure instead of using the chemical fertilizers you can go for this which is uh, like a bio manure energy density which is having a very high energy density if you compare this producer gas and then this biogas biogas is having like 23 megajoules per meter cube okay whereas this producer gas is having 4 to 8 megajoules per meter cube okay so that is having a higher energy densities where do you use that of course uh, we can use this as a, a cooking gas okay instead of lpg you can use this as a cooking gas and then lighting purpose as well as well as small ic engines you can use this um, the biogas okay this is about uh, the different uh, forms of biomass okay we discussed about different uh, types of fuels those are solid liquid and gaseous biofuels and then the first two are fuel and charcoal and fuel pellets and briquettes these comes under this solid uh, type of biofuels and we have biodiesel bioethanol okay those are the liquid type of biofuels as well as producer gas and then the biogas are the uh, the gaseous type of biofuels okay so we convert the, basically the bio biomass into the useful form of energy useful form of fuels those are in uh, like a solid liquid or a gaseous biofuels so next we will discuss about the topic the biomass resources so what do you mean by the biomass resources are so where does this biomass come from okay what are the resources or the raw materials for this biomass production so there are various resources for the biomass so those are all listed out here the first one is uh, it is agriculture residue which is the uh, the first form of a biomass or the resource of a biomass okay whatever the the waste uh, are the byproducts of an agriculture that can be a good uh, biomass okay we can extract a, uh, the biomass from that uh, biomass energy from that agriculture waste and then second one is aquatic plants okay so we know that okay on the land as well as in the water also we have uh, like uh, the plants growing okay uh, uh, inside the water okay that can could be a uh, like a source or the resource for the uh, production of biomass energy and uh, urban waste okay so that is uh, having two types that is municipal solid waste and uh, sewage uh, like municipal solid waste is uh, basically uh, it is uh, produced or uh, the biomass is extracted by uh, burning it okay directly similarly we will see like how does uh, the sewage water can be uh, utilized in order to produce the biomass energy okay next one is energy crops okay so we have uh, like uh, certain crops which are uh, grown uh, for the reason of uh, producing the uh, biomass energy for the purpose of producing the biomass energy those crops are called as the energy crops okay so we'll look, look into in detail okay what are uh, those energy crops okay so the, uh, these energy crops are again classified as uh, sugar plants uh, starch plants as well as oil producing plants okay so we'll look in detail okay uh, what kind of a fuel or the liquid or a uh, solid fuel can be produced from that uh, like a, a energy crops and then of course a forest uh, which is an important resource uh, for a, a production of biomass energy okay so we'll look into detail about that one and then uh, the while in the uh, during the introduction classes uh, we said that the important reason behind this biomass energy is the utilization of sun energy okay the energy from the sun by the plants through the process of photosynthesis okay that uh, energy is converted into the uh, like they produce their own food the plants so that is called as a photosynthesis process okay we will see in detail what is the definition of photosynthesis process what is the basic reaction which is involved there and then how does this photosynthesis process happen okay so as well as there is a 
one more uh, reaction that is taking place in the plants that is called as a respiration okay we will also see that as well okay so these are uh, various types of energy resources okay we will now discuss one by one so the first one is uh, agriculture residue okay so what are the raw materials uh, like from the agriculture uh, field or the industry so that can be used for the biomass uh, resources or the raw materials for this uh, biomass energy production are okay for example uh, the straw okay so and then rice husk okay after processing this rice okay uh, that husk which is produced after processing it okay that can be used as a, a biomass um, okay to produce a biomass energy and then the coconut uh, shell okay after de asking of this coconut okay whatever that outer portion of this uh, coconut okay so that is a very important source of okay biomass uh, energy and then we have a groundnut shell okay so we have this after uh, separating the groundnut seed from the uh, the shell okay that shell is also having a, a good quantity of biomass energy okay so and then uh, of course under the agriculture residue, we have this uh, sugarcane bagasse. So, what is bagasse? As I told before, okay. So, uh, after extracting the juices, okay, for the production of sugar uh, from the sugarcane, okay, the whatever the remaining portion, okay, the remaining byproduct or the residue remaining is called as a, a bagasse, okay. So, that can also be used for the production, I mean, as a, a resource for the production of biomass energy okay so uh, like all these are agriculture residues okay from the agriculture industry we get these byproducts byproducts that can be used for the like a production of biomass okay so what we can do from that okay in what type of fuel that we can convert them into what type of fuel a biofuel okay so we can convert them is one is a producer gas okay so that is gaseous fuel okay also used as a, a pellets and briquettes okay so producer gas as i was explaining uh, um, before uh, it is uh, through the process of gasification okay so we take this uh, agriculture residue in a gasifier and then under certain uh, maintaining certain pressure and a uh, temperature normally higher temperature we produce the gases that com normally com contains like carbon dioxide and hyd hydrogen uh, uh, as well as carbon monoxide okay those are the producer gas that can be used as a gaseous fuel that is a biogas fuel so for various applications and then pellets and briquettes okay so what we make is in order to increase the energy density or take out the moisture inside this all these uh, residues okay we uh, like combine or compact uh, these residue in the form of a pellets or briquettes okay so that is uh, in that way also we can use that uh, energy from the agriculture residue okay so this is uh, about the agriculture uh, residue okay basically what we do here is so we take the residue from the agriculture so and then we will uh, try to convert that uh, like a residue into the useful form of energy that is a biofuel okay so and then next one is aquatic plants what do you mean by the aquatic okay so plants are the plants which are grows inside the water okay it can be like a salt water as well as a fresh water some of the plants uh, like they grow uh, like uh, in the sea as well as uh, in the rivers lakes etc okay so those can also be form a useful resource for the production of this biofuels okay some of the plants that can be used as a resource for the uh, production of biofuel is the water hyacinth uh, that is a name of the plant and then kelp seaweed okay the weed that grows inside the sea and then algae okay which can also be used as a, a resource for the a production of biomass and then aquatic advantages of these aquatic plants okay over the the plants which goes on the land is that uh, in the water the plants can grow faster that is one of the important advantage of this aquatic plants okay so what form of energy we can convert them into is okay we can convert them into the liquid form of biofuel okay so what are the liquid form is ethanol okay or you can also convert it, that into the biogas energy okay so if you take them in the a digester um, or we can biogas digester so we ferment them and then we produce the ga gas that is called as a biogas okay so this is about aquatic plants basically we use the plants that grows inside the water 
uh, like both uh, salt as well as a fresh water plants we uh, like we, uh, convert them into the useful form of uh, liquid fuel that is ethanol okay or it can be gaseous fuel that is a biogas okay next is urban waste the waste which is collected okay so that can be a solid waste or the liquid waste okay what is solid waste is called as normally it is called as msw what do you mean by msw is municipal uh, solid waste okay what they collect uh, from uh, every house okay so that is called as a, a municipal solid waste that is produced inside the house okay that contains uh, like a uh, like waste from the vegetables or uh, fruits okay so any food uh, after uh, food waste okay that all comes into this uh, municipal solid waste okay so and then paper wood okay so etc so this is uh, how do you convert this municipal solid waste into the useful form of bioenergy is that uh, by the process of incineration okay what do you mean by incineration is you come like you burn them or, or you can uh, combustion of this uh, municipal solid waste will give you that energy heat energy basically so and also landfill gas okay when you uh, like accumulate lot of uh, municipal solid waste uh, waste okay uh, like over the land so that will produce a landfill gas that gas having a energy that can be used as a biofuel as well and then uh, sewage liquid okay that is can be co converted as biogas after processing after processing of sewage liquid that is waste uh, liquid okay that can be used as a biogas um, liquid i mean biogas production of biogas that is a gaseous fuel actually okay so this is about agriculture residue aquatic plants and urban waste okay basically we are discussing about what are the different types of resources we have uh, for the production of this biogas i'm sorry uh, bio uh, fuels okay so our uh, for the biomass so and then energy crops the crops which are grown uh, for producing the energy are called as energy crops they are of three types sugar plants starch plants and then the grains okay for each of them i have given some of the examples for the sugar plants okay which contains sugar as a major um, like component sugar cane which is an important uh, energy crop so after this uh, processing after extracting the juices okay so that bagasse can be used uh, uh, through the fermentation process you can produce this uh, liquid fuel that is called as a bioethanol and then we have uh, sweet sorghum so that is also used to produce the uh, bioethanol sweet sorghum is also a kind of crop that is an energy crop that also can be converted into the a yeah, liquid fuel that is bioethanol and then sugar beet okay which is also used to produce the ethanol uh, liquid okay that is a bio biofuel okay liquid biofuel okay so these are the some of the sugar plants okay so that can be used as a energy crops and then we have a starch plants okay which has a, a starch as a uh, important component as a major component okay those are called as the star plants okay so those are like uh, jerusalem uh, artichoke that is bioethanol okay so basically uh, this plant is a tubular plant okay so that can also grow in a, a infertile soil or the pu uh, poor uh, quality soil so that can be used to produce this bioethanol as well and then we have uh, cassava that is also a tubular plant that can also grow in the infertile soil that is used to produce the bioethanol as well okay so we know that uh, there are some grains okay for example maize barley okay or rice wheat okay and then all these grains okay so maize barley rice and wheat okay they can used or to produce the liquid fuel that is the ethanol okay so they serve as energy crop in order to produce the biomass okay so that will be uh, converted into the a uh, useful form of uh, biomass fuel okay liquid fuel that is the ethanol that can be used uh, in the automobiles okay so ic engines etc and then oil producing plants there are some plants they have these seeds okay by pressing these seeds the oil okay uh, can be produced okay for example you have seen like a common uh, uh, example that we have all seen is the sunflower plants okay the sunflower the seeds as this oil okay so that can be used as a biofuel and then rapeseed 
a palm oil soya bean okay so that is also containing oil content and ground nut okay so ground nut or peanut okay so after crushing it okay after processing it you get the uh, the oil okay that contains uh, the energy so and then a uh, cotton seed these all can be used okay now to produce this uh, like a, uh, a useful form of energy okay so that uh, you can produce this uh, oil producing plants okay uh, that oil can be used as a energy okay there are some of the advantages of using this uh, oil producing plants okay those are so this extraction is simple like for example if you take this sunflower the extraction of the oil from them is simple and also filtering is also a very simple okay and then uh, residue is used okay after extracting this oil whatever the residue remaining that can be used to produce the biogas okay by the fermentation process okay uh, in the digester and then they are of low cost that is one more advantage and then they are safe to handle and then easy to store okay those are some of the advantages of uh, using this oil producing plants okay so next one important resource of this um, uh, biomass resources is forest okay so forest can be natural are cultivated cultivate cultivated means you grow the forest okay for the purpose of producing the energy okay so what are what do you find in the forest is you can have a wood okay from the wood by the carbonization process you can have a charcoal which is also a solid fuel and then from the uh, like a charcoal or the wood chips are from the residue from the forest you can produce a producer gas okay so these are the some of the useful form of uh, the energy okay that can be produced some of the forest trees that are very useful are uh, eucalyptus is one of them and then poplar and then the pine okay these are the some of the trees which are very useful in producing this um, biomass energy okay or the solid fuel okay or the gaseous fuel and uh, this is about uh, the different resources agriculture uh, biomass resources agriculture residue aquatic plants as well as urban waste it can be liquid or solid waste and then we have this energy crops that can also serve as a resource for the biomass as well as uh, important thing is a uh, forest okay so which is also a very important uh, uh, like a resource for the producing the biomass and later on uh, photosynthesis process okay so as i said before uh, the uh, all this biomass energy is because of the sun the energy from the sun okay so the plants use this energy from the sun uh, they produce this uh, like a complex sugars or the uh, starch okay or cellulose okay using this energy from the sun that uh, will be used as a biomass energy okay so here uh, if you look at this photosynthesis okay photo means uh, the light synthesis means to produce okay or to create okay using the light you are synthesizing the energy okay that is what photosynthesis means okay so the major uh, the definition of this photosynthesis process is that okay process in green plants okay this photosynthesis process happens in green plants combining carbon dioxide and water those are the raw materials are input uh, carbon dioxide and water and plus light energy the energy from the sun okay after re like chemical reaction the output is you will get the oxygen that is released into the atmosphere as well as um, like a carbohydrates okay that is sugar starch or cellulose okay so basically we combine this carbon dioxide and then water along with light energy in order to produce this uh, like a oxygen as well as the uh, sugars that is starch cellulose etc so this is the basic reaction for the photosynthesis a process okay that is 6 co2 plus 6 h2o plus light energy which is equal to, i mean gives out okay six times oxygen plus c6 h12o6 okay that is uh, basically carbohydrate sugar cellulose etc okay so this is a process of uh, this uh, photosynthesis okay and for uh, the light energy from the sun or the radiation from the sun basically perform two functions one is uh, it controls the temperature okay and then one more is the uh, it um, the photosynthesis process that is the important process okay so here we have a sketch 
and then this explains the uh, two reactions actually one is photosynthesis and respiration okay so here we have the leaf and then the root okay and then radiation from the sun is here and then this leaf absorbs the carbon dioxide okay and then it also absorbs the radiation that is energy from the sun in the form of light and then um, it will also observe the water okay water is sucked okay through the roots okay so by combining all of them it gives out the oxygen to the atmosphere and then it will produce this a, a carbohydrates that carbohydrates are supplied to the various parts of the all the parts of the plants okay so this is about the photosynthesis process okay so this is a very important process okay so for this uh, production of energy inside the uh, plants okay that can be used as the uh, the energy uh, the biomass energy okay that biomass and biomass can be converted into the useful form of the uh, fuels that is called as a biofuels okay so that is uh, about uh, the biomass resources different types of resources and then the one of the important process in the plants that is the photosynthesis process okay so that's it for the session thank you so much